What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and continue learning about British animals and wildlife, part two. If, if you haven't seen part one, feel free to check that out. We're, we're learning about all the different animals that exist in Britain compared to the ones that exist in America, the ones I know about. And I mean, in part one, we went over some of the strange animals in, in Britain, I gotta tell you. Some that are liable to maybe, I don't know, tear your head off. <laughs> some that are a little dangerous. Others that are kind of cute. Animals that Americans would probably try to scoop up and take home and have the police called on them or something. I don't know if that's legal. Either way, today where we're picking up uh, is this section on insects. Insects in Britain, which is not a topic I ever thought I'd get the honor of learning about, but apparently that's a part of this whole series. So insects and bugs in Britain compared to America and probably some other things as well. So oh, without further ado, let's take a look. Now let's talk about some creepy crawlies. Mm. When it comes to insects, the UK and US differ yet again. In the UK, okay. popular species are dragon. Oh, this is the UK right here. Okay, so she's starting with species you can find in the UK. I gotta say, even like with this picture here, I'm not one of those people who really can <laughs> just stand back and appreciate the beauty of insects, no matter how beautiful some are. I'm, uh, they're mostly disturbing to me, but here we go. Uh, British insects. UK and US differ yet again. In the UK, popular species are dragonflies, grasshoppers, flies, beetles, butterflies, bees, wasps, and ants. In the US- I mean, that that sounds similar. I, I think the America has every single one of those things. I mean, some are more common than others, but flies. <laughs> Go figure, everywhere has flies. Ants. You don't see too many beetles, but I guess cockroaches, I don't know. Um, wasps, bees, sounds pretty similar, I guess. It's kind of what I expected. Like, is there really crazy insects of other species uh, running around or flying around in Britain? I guess not. Say you'll find many of the same, but with some noticeable differences. Oh, so these are the ones in the USA. I mean, from the way she's talking, it sounds like the USA species are the same, but a little different? Or there's more variants of insects in America? Firstly, the insect population as a whole in the US, whether you want to measure by square foot or square meter or whatever, is more concentrated and more intense than in the UK. In the what? UK, having a screened window is extremely uncommon, whereas what? in the US, particularly in parts of the South, it is a necessity. The what? Okay. I went into this assuming I was gonna be freaked out by what's in Britain with some of the insects, but it sounds like this is honestly just making me more scared of, unfortunately, where I live <laughs> in America. Yes, we do all have screen doors on basically any sliding door that goes out the back of your house or any extra door, and many front doors have a screen door, a second door, to stop all the, the bugs. <laughs> from getting in. I didn't realize that was uh, not totally normal. The UK does have mosquitoes, but the mosquito season and the, the numbers of them are much lower than, again, in parts of the American South and in huh. America in general, which has a longer and more intense mosquito season. Huh. Cockroaches, too, are a common part of life, especially in the American South and particularly in- f Well, what the- now? <laughs> All I'm learning is that <laughs> I may want to escape to Britain at some point to get away from all the bugs. Florida, um, to see them on your ceiling, in your house, just helping themselves walking around, it's very, very common. It doesn't mean that your house is dirty or that there's necessarily an infestation. Okay, I gotta say, like, you will encounter a cockroach or a bug or something, but I don't know too much about what's going on in the south of the United States. Uh, apparently they have even more bugs. Um, <laughs> geez. But if you find a cockroach in your home, that's pretty abnormal. You're, you're pretty disturbed. Like, it's not common. It shouldn't be common if you're 
throwing away your garbage and stuff, but I don't know. I, I feel like she almost represents that there's cockroaches running around all our homes and we're just cohabitating happily. Uh, we may be cohabitating, but it's not happily. You're just living amongst the cockroaches. In the UK, <laughs> I had to look up whether cockroaches existed here. Right. And it turns out they do, but they're so uncommon that huh. I was reading a thread of multiple people who said they were in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, had lived in the UK their entire life. They had never, at any point, seen a cockroach wow. in their house, in the wild, wherever. Wow. Um, I've been here for 10 years, have not seen a cockroach. So they do exist, wow. but very, very, very uncommon. There's just less bugs. Like she even said, the density of insects existing in Britain is less than in America. There's just less bugs. That is just straight up better, in my opinion. Like, I don't think anyone would even argue against that. Does, is there someone out there who wants to live amongst more bugs, insects? Whereas, like I said, in Florida and in other parts of the American South, they just make themselves at home. Now, there's a very <laughs> special insect in the UK that's much prettier than a cockroach. Oh, okay, so she made a correction there. There's an insect in the United States much prettier than the cockroach. What what do we have, like a beetle? And it's one that not a ton of Brits may have seen before. Butterfly? It's called a firefly, and they're basically bugs mm. that light up and fly around, particularly in the summertime. A lot of people associate fireflies with really nostalgic memories of being outdoors, particularly- a Yeah, wow. Wow, uh, fireflies. Some people in America call them lightning bugs, fireflies. Um, I, I didn't know that didn't exist much or at all in Britain. That's kind of sad. Okay, there's the trade-off. In America, we're full of disgusting bugs, but some of them are cool. Fireflies may be the one, one bug that gets a pass in America because they are amazing. Like, they, it's nighttime and there's these bugs flying around that literally have little lights made out of chemicals, a chemical reaction happening in their body to produce a light, a little light bulb on their back. It's amazing. And as a child, it really does fill you with that sense of childlike wonder that anything is possible. And then you grow up and learn about all the disgusting bugs and you go, no, no, no. But then you can <laughs> watch a YouTube video and remember the lightning bugs ex exist and be like a child again. Anyway, <laughs> enough ranting. Lightning bugs, fireflies are awesome. And I guess I forgot they, they don't exist everywhere in the world. That's... That's unfortunate, they're awesome. Of childhood, of chasing them around. There are songs about them, there are yeah. odes to how much people love them. And in general, they're just seen as something that's pretty magical. In yeah. the UK, there is a species of light up bugs that they call glowworms. Um, and these are similar to fireflies. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Whoa, oh, oh, I think I prefer the firefly. I'm sorry, these glow worms are, <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe this is a bad picture. Maybe they caught him at a bad time of day, but this is not doing it for me, This whatever this thing is. But the version that they have in the UK, the ones that fly around are the males and they don't light up. The ones that do huh. light up are the females and they huh. can be seen but they're mostly going to be seen at a very particular point of the summer and they're going to be crawling on the ground or perhaps crawling up like a tree stalk or something. Oh. So you need to look down and look for bugs that are crawling as opposed to the American, what we would call the firefly, which are flying around lit up. Yeah, flying around. They light up like every so often, not constantly. And children run around, try to catch them. They can't bite you or anything. Yeah, it's fun. Another American experience is the cicada, which are insects that make a really loud mating call, particularly in the warmer months, that can be genuinely hard to hear over top of in the worst of it. Yeah, she just she was just playing a sample of the cicada sound in the background, and it kind of <laughs> gave me nightmares a little bit. Man, there's no cicadas in Britain as well. Man, would I trade fireflies for no cicadas? Maybe. Cicadas are disgusting. They exist in America in certain parts. And the thing is, there are broods or generations of cicadas that live, they burrow under the ground and live under the ground for 
5, 10, 15 years at a time. And then every couple of years, it'll be on the news in certain parts of America that cicadas are going to hatch this year. And it is disgusting. It's a, in certain parts, if you're near a cicada sort of egg nesting ground where they come up, it's kind of terrifying. I've been places. It's like a cloud, a cloud of bugs. They're not small. They are big flying insects. They can't really hurt you, but there's so many and they make this terrifying sound because there's, there's hundreds of thousands of them, probably. Yeah, man, I could get away from the cicadas in Britain. That is tempting. If you watched my video where I did kind of a sketch about the Florida Tourism Board welcoming a UK tourist, you will know that in that video I had to stop filming multiple times because it was genuinely so loud from the sounds of insects outside. For yeah, I mean, can I get a picture of a cicada? Cicada insect. Cicada incubation period, that's coming up. Cicada. Yeah, the incubation period can be like decades. Yeesh! Oh man, oh man. Let's open this up. Let's take a look. Experience the terror with me for a moment. This thing, flying around, almost a million of them, in a cloud, smacking you in the face. If you try to walk through the cloud of cicadas, like they will run into you. <laughs> They'll like smack into your body. They're, they don't know where they're going. Yeah, it's just like there's so many of them and it's it's every so often, like once a generation, once every couple of years, this huge uh, kind of birth of cicadas will come around certain parts of America. It's crazy. It's, it's not good. Not good. From cicadas in the summer to the classic sound of crickets on the bayou, the U.S. in general tends mm. to be louder when it comes to the insect population. They yeah. make themselves known. The U.K., yeah. on the other hand, does have cicadas. And actually in the U.K., it tends to be pronounced cicada, but in the U.S. we say cicada. Ah. They do have an elusive, elusive species of it that is generally found in the new forest, but my research shows that they haven't actually found them in the past 10 years. So huh. this isn't something that is going to be creating the all-encompassing sounds like the American cicadas. Ah. I would say in general, much like the Brits themselves, the insects in the UK are much quieter and reserved and calm compared to their that's, American counterparts. That's what I that's that's what I'm getting here is like the insects in Britain are just a lot more polite, a lot more considerate of our of noise <laughs> and overall annoyance. There's less insects, less types, and none of the loud ones, basically. America has Fireflies? That, that's something? I, I don't know. I don't know. Who like to yell so loudly that you can't help but pay attention to them. To fish <laughs> out our creepy crawly section, I've got everybody's favorites, spiders. The most common spider Ooh. in the UK is actually just called the house spider, and it's found during spider season from early September to mid-October. The house spider. House spider. House spider. Man. I, I don't think we really have a spider called a house spider. Some people might say that, but it's not a technical term. This thing is kind of disgusting. It's very hairy. <laughs> I can't quite tell how big it is. Um, it's like a kind of like what we would call a daddy long leg. Little spiders that run around. Okay. And it's found during spider season from early September to mid-October. By Christmas, most are gone, but it's definitely not uncommon to find these creatures in your house again. Oh, no, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. Christmas, most are gone, but it's definitely not uncommon to find these creatures in your house. Again, yeah. it doesn't indicate that your house is dirty or there's something wrong with it. You're just living amongst the spiders. Ah. We found them in our bathtub, in our ceilings, and there have definitely been some screams around this house when we accidentally discover the eight-legged creature that we didn't know was like sharing our pillow. In your bathtub? In your pillow? Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe I do stay here after all. I mean, there's more like flying insects in America that are making a racket, but you might run into one of these house spiders in your pillow in Britain. I don't know anymore. Uh, or our shower with us. The spiders in the UK, unlike some spiders in the US, are not actually dangerous. They okay. do have the false widow, and that spider can produce some pain when it comes to the bite, but it's nowhere near as dangerous as the actual black widow. It yeah, like America definitely has brown recluse, black widow spiders, like f 
spiders that are famous in America, like everyone knows these names because they are dangerous. Uh, I, I should brush up because I don't know exactly what they look like. I just really, <laughs> I wouldn't let any spider bite me. Uh, hopefully, unless it's hiding in my pillow, I guess. But we have spiders that are genuinely life-threatening, so that's not good. In the U.S., spider season is definitely a thing, and it's in the fall, but this also varies by state. So again, if you think about mm. how big the U.S. is compared to how big the U.K. is, it would make sense that certain areas are going to have more of an infestation than others. Yeah, exactly. That's very important to remember with all this stuff. The America is so gigantic, like... If from one side to another, state to state, things, climate, animal life changes drastically. Um, there's some things that are just kind of common, like squirrels, daddy long legs, ants, just you'll find everywhere. But uh, there's spiders and stuff that you're, you're not going to find everywhere as well. So that is definitely something that seems a lot different than Britain. As an example, I've seen more spiders in my house and in the general surroundings in the UK in the 10 years I've lived here than I ever saw in Florida in the 20 plus years I lived there. There right. are a couple of spiders to watch out for in the US, including the brown recluse and the black widow. The yeah. bites from these spiders can be incredibly dangerous and actually deadly. And as a child, if you live in an area where these are popular, generally you are taught early on how to spot what they look like. For right. so the black widow, it's usually the reddish hourglass shape on the back that you're taught about. But honestly, oh. I've never encountered a black widow that I know of in the US, despite living in an area that has them be tough like <laughs> it's on the underside of this uh, black widow spider you'd have to get kind of close to it to to check to see what it is which seems like a bit of a flaw that you're having to get one foot away from the deadly spider to check what it is what is this thing oh that's a black you're this close to it you're like what is this thing oh it's a black widow spider oh you know <laughs> encountered a black widow that i know of in the u.s despite living in an area that has them and i feel like by the time you get so close to the shape on the spider you're getting too close anyway so possibly <laughs> yeah. if you just see any spider in the u.s you should turn around and go the other direction right. when it comes to reptiles again turn around in the other direction or do what many americans has ad have adopted as the broom the deadly broom uh combat form where you grab your broom you spin it a few times and you shove it as far up into that spider as humanly possible no matter what kind it is and then you kind of fling it away and then run away still you know every american knows this combat form and you're about to sense a trend here. The U.S. has many more dangerous snakes than the U.K., which, as what? we talked about, is just the adder. So in the U.S. The s snakes as well. Man, we're really getting into the wildlife and animals. Uh, all different types, which is great. Snakes. Luckily, I've for most of my life, I've gone through not even thinking about snakes, even as uh, someone who's grown up in America. I guess the states I've lived in, thankfully, haven't been big snake areas because i never think about them you don't when you do see a snake and you do once a year once every few years if you go out into nature whatever it's a it's definitely a rare event you're definitely on edge a little so i don't know anything about snakes but it kind of is typical now huh that we have worse insects worse uh spiders um worse snakes like, more of everything bad. Plus, there are over 20 species. Spe I, always, I feel like I'm saying species weird in this video. Species, species, species. Um, <laughs> there are over 20 species of dangerous snakes, including the cottonmouth, um, including uh. one that's very popular in Florida. Again, I say popular like they won some election. Common in Florida, the water moccasin, as well as the uh. really, really dangerous ones like the rattlesnakes. I had no idea how many different types of rattlesnakes there were until researching for this video. Yeah, like most Americans have heard of a rattlesnake, and that's about it. That is about it, and I've never seen one in real life. That would be... I feel like they hang out in deserts or something. Like, I don't know. I, there's no way I've encountered one. The most dangerous one, it appears, is the Mojave rattlesnake, which basically kills huh. its prey slowly with its destructive enzymes. Huh. Charming. 
Parts of the U.S. are also abundant with lizards. This could range from the common brown lizard, which is standard in Florida. If you've ever been on holiday or vacation huh. to Florida, you probably will have seen one. They were introduced by... Uh, they came over from Cuba somehow over a huh. hundred years ago, and they are now the most popular type in Florida. These creatures... Huh. Uh, it's very rare to run into a lizard. Usually they're this big, running on the ground or something, this big. Um, very uncommon to run into a lizard or snake, but they do exist, I suppose, technically. Generally, just get everywhere. They live... Anywhere they want, in your backyard, in your front yard, seeing them in your house, not uncommon. A lizard huh. in your house is not something that you would kind of just leave to its own devices. You would typically look like a fool trying to chase it out, but they do get in. I mean, maybe they get into the house, but again, it's because they're this big. They're the size of a bug. Uh, and this, again, depends on where you live in the United States. It's very different, but uh, in in most cases... You're not going to find a giant lizard randomly running around your house. Maybe a maybe, maybe a very tiny one. But in certain parts of America, maybe that happens. I don't know. I can't know for sure. In the house through cracks and stuff like that. Another type of lizard commonly found in the U.S. is called the skink. And it is as disgusting as it looks in the ah. pictures if you see one in person. Oh, looks like a little worm. A little worm with legs or something. And you've got iguanas. Fun language fact, most Brits I've heard say iguana, whereas most Americans will say iguana. 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 Yeah, I've never seen an iguana. Like, yeah, like you're not going to catch an iguana running around in your backyard or something. Which fact, most Brits I've heard say iguana, whereas most Americans will say iguana. So hmm. you've got them roaming around, and you've also got things like horned lizards. Hmm. So there you have it. We have touched hmm. just the surface of the iceberg that is the UK versus US wildlife. And yeah. basically, to sum it up, if you're visiting the UK, you should expect a very generally calm and friendly animal population yeah. that will let you get on with your business. Yeah, seriously, that's all. I, that is my takeaway from this. Go to the UK, go to Britain to have a relaxing time and not worry about the horrors of the animal kingdom for two seconds. On the other hand, visitors to America should generally avoid, feel like making eye contact with any animal until you're actually convinced it's a cute puppy, as opposed to a brown bear who thinks you're food, a poisonous rattlesnake <laughs> trying to kill you, or a cockroach which will not hurt you but will give you nightmares for days. Yeah. Oh, and P.S. We haven't covered too many aquatic animals in this video, but I'll right. just end with a map of great white shark territories. You can see that they're found in both oceans, uh, uh. the Atlantic and Pacific in the huh. U.S., whereas despite some unconfirmed spotting by fishermen, there have been no actually confirmed spottings of great white sharks in the U.K. waters. I'm going to huh. go ahead and guess that this is something that our British viewers will be very happy about. Oh, of course. We we also have the great white sharks. Perfect. Wow. Hope you guys learned something today. Thank you so much for watching. If you want more videos on the UK versus USA, definitely make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when I... Okay. Very good. Very good. Very nice video. Very informative. Uh, not happy with what I learned, but very informative nonetheless. This video is by Girl Gone London, by the way. And I have to give it a like, because I liked that very much. Very informative, very off-putting, very disturbing, but very informative and entertaining. Uh, I mean, she managed to cover all the animals that are, like, common and running around on the ground, but also a lot more I didn't, I didn't know that I wanted to know about. Insects, snakes, lizards. Uh, and all I learned was that, uh, <laughs> you can have a better time in Britain, but hey, for certain people, maybe you'll have a better time in America observing all the interesting wildlife and animals that exist here as you're running away with your broom trying to smack them. You know, that's kind of fun. Good cardio, bit of an activity. <laughs> but um, there are times where I thought here the amount of wildlife or critters running around America was a little overrepresented. Um, depending on where you live in America, this can change a lot, but I've lived in a couple states and I, I, you just don't, you don't run into all this wild animals and, and deadly spiders and lizards and snakes all the time, constantly. 
Americans still will look at animals like and be like, oh, wow, it's a snake over there. Let's go. Or a lizard. That's very, um, I've never seen a lizard that was more than this big. Um, but yeah, you know, there, there, apparently there's a lot more animals and stuff here, but not like that it's interfering with your everyday life, except for the cicadas. The cicadas, perhaps, when they, when they, their brood gives birth and they come out of the ground. I've lived in some areas where it is just disturbing. It is like a plague has ascended on the lands. It, it, no joke. Look up some video. You can probably look up videos on YouTube about cicada swarming places. It's it's wild, and they make a, a racket. Anyway, <laughs> this is turning into a cicada <laughs> ant protest video. <laughs> Whereas instead, it is actually uh, an enjoyable American versus British wildlife video that I very much enjoyed. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to British culture, stuff in Britain that I've never seen or talked about before, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.